the Nikon ZF Review for wedding photography. I've used this camera at weddings, I've used it at engagement sessions, I've used it for portraits, and I've used it for an enjoyable travel time in Japan. Hello there, I am Taylor Jackson, and I have photographed over 1,000 weddings all around the world. I have written an audiobook about that with my voice, and no, I am not a robot, if that's what you're wondering. This channel is a little bit unique because I've used all of the current Nikon cameras, all the current Canon cameras, Sony cameras, Fuji, and Leica cameras at real life weddings. So I have a pretty good perspective of what's going on in the industry and what actually works on a wedding day. I was actually part of the pre-production release of this camera here, the Nikon ZF, but I'm not going to let my relationship with Nikon skew me in this review. This is my honest feedback on this camera for wedding photographers. I did purchase this camera with my own money as well as the lenses, and this is in no way a sponsored video. If you're a hybrid photo and video creator, I'll be doing another video next month that includes more thoughts and comparisons on this camera versus others in the industry. Also, if you're watching this before January 12th, 2024, you can still get in on the craziest deal that I've ever done Book More Weddings, now updated for 2024, and it's at the most nuts price ever. And if you get in before January 12th, you also get a ton of bonuses, including my new flash course, which shows my regular flash strategies for weddings, plus this new flash on a string that I'm working with in this video that you're watching right now. The deal also comes with a lot of bonus videos like my road to $100,000 per season as a wedding photographer and how to build out a $300,000 per year hybrid photo video studio for weddings plus other bonuses like my new presets and a lot more. You just gotta get it before January 12th. All right, back to the Nikon ZF. I have 15 things to talk about today and all of them are good. The only negative I can really find with this camera is that the ergonomics don't really scale to a heavier 1.2 prime. It's fine, but it's not ideal. So if it's your dream to shoot the 51.2 all day or even put some serious hours on the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8, the Z8 might be a better option for you. Even with this grip here added to the ZF, it's just not the most ideal solution. That said, if you're like me and you plan to just use the 51.2 in shorter bursts or the Tamron 35 to 150 just for ceremonies and maybe a few couples portraits, a few hours a day with a non-ergonomic kit is forgivable. And I guess I should preface this with this is, these are my feelings and my experience with this camera, but please go and hold this camera in a store and make your decisions based on your hands and your feelings. Maybe also a downside if you are into them, there is no battery grip option for the ZF. There's no third party battery option grip yet. That's not words. Again, not a robot. So the camera basically stays this size. Let's get to the things. The camera is a great size and incredibly well built. The dials are brass, so you get that really nice film click to them. That said, I don't really use the dials at all on wedding days. I set everything to these front and back wheels because it's easier and it's faster. Number two, it comes set up pretty well, but the modification that I make immediately is I set the record button up here to ISO so that your back wheel can adjust ISO. Another custom button I like to do is switch this button here into DX crop mode to get a little bit of extra reach for my lenses. The downside is that it gives you less megapixels because you're essentially cropping in camera. But for some documentary style images during the day, I think that's totally fine. Typically, I use this when I get to the end of that Tamron 35 to 150 during a ceremony and I just want to get a closer photo. I use Imagine to edit all of my images so it's not going to crop creatively for me. So I got to get it as right as I can in camera. Also, if you're not using AI editing through Imagine, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Go give it a shot, try it out in January when you have some time off maybe, unless you live in Australia or New Zealand or anywhere in South America. But more of the, more of the reason to try it out, uh, use my referral link because if you use that, you get 1500 free edits rather than the regular 1000. Um, but it was the biggest thing that changed in my career over the past two years is using Imagine for AI editing. It's just so good, so dialed. That's all I have to say about Imagine. Back to the camera. There's also more limited custom buttons on this camera, so if you are coming from Sony where you have a button set up for absolutely everything, you may find some limitations on this camera. But overall, I am pretty happy. Number three, a non-functional thing. It comes in nice colors as well, like this green. You just have to order it direct from Nikon. But honestly, overall, this camera is really functional and it's also very nice to look at. It's also kind of a conversation starter. People often think that it's a film camera and uh, if that aligns with your brand positioning, if you are a digital and film shooter, Maybe this just aligns better with your brand overall. Aesthetically, it looks a lot nicer than most of the cameras out there. Number four, let's talk about autofocus. Prior to the Nikon Z9, 
People really criticize Nikon for autofocus. It's not an issue any longer. So if you're reading older posts and you're, or you're listening to people that haven't used one of the newer cameras, just ignore it completely. I really enjoy the Nikon autofocus in all lighting conditions, including low light. I also really like that you can customize your focus boxes so you can run it at full wide points and use every single autofocus point, or you can make smaller boxes that just kind of ignore. So for instance, if a couple is walking down the aisle, you can make a box or use 3D tracking to only select a couple and just ignore everyone on the sidelines. Overall, the autofocus gets very, very few misses and I shoot from the screen and I'm a little bit chaotic when I'm shooting. I'm just taking lots of pictures and sometimes I'm looking at the screen, sometimes I'm looking at my couple. And I will put the autofocus up there with Canon and Sony in my real life experience at wedding days. Number five, to talk about the screen, it's very nice. The EVF is also good enough but it's not going to blow your mind. Over the year 2020, I was wearing a mask at weddings and I kind of stopped using the viewfinder because the mask would fog the viewfinder up. So I started using just live view and now that is absolutely what I prefer. I would say that 99.8% of the images that I take on a wedding day are from the LCD screen. The cases that I will use the, the EVF, number one, if I'm photographing in the bright sun and I just can't see what I'm doing. Also, the screen is more than bright enough in bright sun, but sometimes you get it right down the barrel and it's just a challenge. Or number two, I'm trying to do something creative with longer shutter speeds, like this photo here in Japan that was completely handheld, or maybe taking a picture with a couple and a waterfall and I want the, the water nice and out of focus. Again, that's how I operate and this camera aligns very well. Speaking of the screen, I personally love that it's a fully articulating screen. The Z8 and Z9 screens are fine for weddings, but I personally prefer a full articulating screen, not only for weddings, but for the wide variety of weird things that I have to do photos and videos of in my career. If it was only for weddings, wedding photography, I don't think that I would have a preference over this versus the tilt. I do really wish that they would do something similar to the Sony a7R Mark V, which is by far the best solution to give you both a tilt screen as well as a flip screen. But I also know the price point on this camera can't include everything. Number six, megapixels. It's 24.5, which is great for weddings. That's that point. Number seven, the files. They are very nice. High ISO is great and the colors are wonderful. And straight into camera JPEGs are also very, very nice. And the raw files aren't bloated 175 megabyte raw files for no reason, which means your cards can go a lot further on a wedding day. When it comes to colors, I find them very pleasing. I shoot shade white balance most of the day and it creates really, really nice skin tones. Also one other bonus with Nikon, I find the files really, really easy to correct in weird mixed lighting environments. And also I think that they perform the absolute best in backlit situations. I just love the look and the feel that Nikon files deliver uh, going all the way back to even the D700 back in 2007. Number eight, cards or dual cards rather. One is an SD, one is a micro SD, and I use that micro SD kind of as internal storage. My micro SD really doesn't ever leave the camera. Uh, to speak to buffer that you might think that the micro SD is gonna cap how many photos you can take, and I've had no issue with it at all. The buffer clears and the right times are incredibly fast, and I am so happy that Nikon included that because without that, I feel like I probably wouldn't recommend this camera as a wedding photography camera with a single card, but because they did that, I use this camera and I'm making this video about it right now. Number nine, the Z lenses and the Nikon ecosystem. They have great lenses. I love all of the F 1.8 Nikon Z lenses. I am also happy that they're open to third parties like Tamron, which brings the 35 to 150 F2 to F2.8 to Nikon. Number 10, adapted lenses. You can get an FTZ adapter, to use older Nikon F-mount lenses. Some of those F-mount lenses will already have autofocus that works with the FTZ. Some will not, but you can actually get an adapter. So this adapter runs my Leica M lenses that are not autofocus and it runs them as autofocus lenses. And then I can add this adapter to get to F-mount, which means I can use any of my old film lenses. Um, the manual film lenses actually will become autofocus lenses. And I think my friend Sam Hurd goes into a little bit more detail of this uh, over on his review. So maybe check that out if you're interested. So yeah, any manual focus F-mount lens or M-mount lens, or they have adapters for everything, uh, could actually be an autofocus lens. And it's just good and fast and just, it's confusing that you can make a manual focus lens into an autofocus lens. Number 11, flash. I feel like flash has been left behind by a lot of the companies with the switch to mirrorless. My Godox kit works well with the Nikon ZF, but it's also nice to have the little SB400 as well. It has a small footprint and I got mine used for not a lot of money. It's not going to overpower the sun, but it will make some situations a little bit easier. And it actually is a flash that will fit into your pocket or into a small bag. Number 12, 
Battery life. The Nikon ZF battery life is great. I would say on a regular wedding day, I go through two batteries, but I always have four total on me just in case. Number 13, you can charge this camera and charge the battery inside of it over USB-C. So you can bring a USB phone charger and plug it in rather than, plug. I find that every time I use a wall charger at a wedding, I leave that wall charger in the getting ready space or at the, the venue at the end of the night. So it's nice to just not leave things, I guess, unless you just don't or put an air tag on or something. Number 14 on the back, you get a dedicated black and white monochrome mode. And I know this is becoming increasingly more popular that a lot of people will shoot in black and white mode all day that your raw files, yes, they're still going to be in color, but in order to see light and see moments a little bit better, uh, you may prefer seeing the preview in black and white. And it's cool that there's a switch for that on this camera. I find that method okay useful on weddings, but I find it a lot more useful or primarily what I'm actually shooting on when I'm out traveling and doing some personal work. Number 15, cost. This is a very nice price point for a camera that does so much. I honestly expected them to release it with one deal breaker feature to not hurt sales of the Z8, but they really didn't leave anything out that I need for weddings. So thumbs up to Nikon. Again, not a robot. It's also really nice that the F1.8 primes are also relatively reasonable in terms of cost. And also there's a lot available used. So you can get a proper pro kit and not break your bank. I don't even know what that term means. I guess the piggy bank, if you're smashing the piggy bank. So all things considered, this Nikon ZF is an incredible buy. If you want book more weddings updated for 2024, check out the absolutely crazy price on the launch deal. Implement what you can this month because February, I think for a lot of us, is our biggest booking month of the entire year. Couples got engaged over the holidays, they booked their wedding venue in January, and in February, it is time for them to book you. So get all the bonuses if you get in before January 12th, 2024, and as always, 100% money back guarantee if you don't like it. I don't know why I'm yelling all of a sudden. I don't have to yell. I can just increase the gain on my microphone. Any questions about the Nikon ZF, put them in the comments below, and I will see you again on another time.